Welcome everyone to the second video in this series. In my previous video, I covered the Seamoth and all of its upgrade modules. For today's video, we are giving the same treatment to the Prawn Suit. There will be spoilers in this, so if you want to avoid those, then this video is not for you. But of course, feel free to check out some of my other Subnautica content instead. To start off, the Prawn Suit is a mechanical walker suit you can use in the game for diving into deeper, extreme pressure environments. Without any upgrades, it can handle depths up to 900 meters before it starts taking damage from the pressure. Like the Seamoth, the Prawn Suit can be damaged by hostile creatures or when exceeding its maximum operating depth. Unlike the Seamoth, the Prawn Suit is more heavily armored, allowing it to handle the damage better. And of course, you can use the repair tool to fix the damage to the Prawn Suit, but if you allow its health to reach zero, it will break and explode. The Prawn Suit also comes initially with two claw arms that can be used for smashing rocks to find resources, picking up items, or defending yourself against aggressive creatures. To provide storage for the items you pick up with it, it has a built-in 24 inventory slot storage space located on its back. The suit also has jump jets allowing you to propel yourself upwards and forwards, making it easier to get back up from the deep dark depths. To build the prawn suit, you will need the mobile vehicle bay as well as four blueprint scans total. In my opinion, the scans for the prawn suit are much easier to find due to all of them being located inside the Aurora. So now let's dive into the upgrades. The prawn suit has two sets of upgrades, one set being for the suit itself and having a blue background, the other set being for the arms and having a purple background. So let's look first at the upgrades for the suit itself. As I said, the initial maximum depth for the prawn suit is 900 meters. You can increase this max depth with two levels of prawn suit depth module. Mark 1 will increase your max depth to 1300 meters. Mark II will increase your max depth to 1700 meters. As with the Seamoth, the depth modules do not stack. Now let's look at the storage module. While the Seamoth gets 16 inventory slots per storage module, with each one providing an individual compartment, the Prawn Suit will get its own internal storage increased by 6 slots. This is probably a balancing effort by the developers since the prawn suit comes with a built-in 24 slot storage. You can stack 4 storage modules total on the prawn suit for a maximum storage capacity of 48 which will be accessible as one continuous inventory space. The hull reinforcement module provides a strength boost to the prawn suit body to reduce damage. A single hull reinforcement module will provide a 20% damage reduction to the prawn suit just like it does the Seamoth. You can also stack up to 4 hull reinforcement modules at which point you will see an 80% reduction in damage. As with the Seamoth, a single engine efficiency module will decrease total power consumption by 15% with additional modules stacking the effect. So with 4 engine efficiency modules, you will have a 60% reduction to prawn suit power consumption. With the prawn suit being meant for greater depths than the Seamoth, it wouldn't make much sense to give it a solar charger. Instead, the prawn suit has a thermal reactor module. So standing the prawn suit in a high temperature environment will cause the ambient thermal energy to be harnessed and recharge the prawn suit's power cell. The recharge rate will depend on the temperature of the environment and, of course, if the temperature fluctuates. Unlike the Seamoth Solar Charger, the Prawn Suit Thermal Reactor does not stack. And last of the suit upgrades, we have the Jump Jet upgrade. The Jump Jets by default can provide a maximum vertical height of 56.8 meters. When you add in the Jump Jet upgrade module, that vertical height increases to 135.8 meters. The jump jet upgrades also provide faster acceleration, meaning a quicker escape from a dangerous situation. Now let's look at the prawn suit arm upgrades. The first and probably most used upgrade is the prawn suit drill arm. The drill arm allows you to drill the large resource deposits you find throughout the world and break them down into usable pieces. Resources dropped from these deposits will automatically be vacuumed up and added to the built-in storage space. You can also use the drill arm as a weapon against the larger creatures in the game, which is one of the subscriber questions that prompted making these videos. I tried testing to determine whether the punching arm or drill arm is stronger, 
but found it to be a bit difficult to get an accurate result due to factors such as the difference in how damage is applied and that creatures flee after being hit. Trying to use the stasis rifle to make this easier, I found a very buggy interaction between the stasis bubble and the prawn suit. In some cases, I would be able to move around the bubble without issue, and other times I would become completely frozen inside the bubble. There's actually a lot of discussion online about the drill arm actually having a higher DPS based on the game's code. But without seeing raw numbers from the code, the difference between a single hit from the punching arm or the number of seconds of damage from the drill arm makes for a difficult comparison. Since the Reaper Leviathan is fond of picking you up in your prawn suit and dragging you around, I thought maybe the Reaper Leviathan will let go of the prawn suit after receiving a certain amount of damage. So in order to compare results, I used the prawn suit's health as a measurement. Test after test, I found that the Reaper would deal between 20 to 30 points of damage to the prawn suit before letting go. This was the case regardless of whether I fought using two punching arms going as fast as I can, two drill arms constantly drilling into his face, or simply not fighting the Reaper at all. Testing against smaller fish, such as the Rabbit Ray, I found I was able to kill them in one or two hits from the punching arm, but spent far more time chasing after them when trying to use the drill arm. Because of that, it took only seconds to kill a Rabbit Ray with the punching arm, and several times longer to achieve the same result with the drill arm. So ultimately, my answer is this. The punching arm does more damage per hit and can clearly be demonstrated by taking down the smaller fish this way. The drill arm may actually have higher DPS, but has the flaw of needing continual contact with the target to deal that higher DPS. So against most creatures, I would say you stick with punching them. But as for Reaper Leviathans and such, I say the stasis rifle plus either knife or thermoblade will be your best friends. So moving on, our second upgrade to the prawn suit arms is the grappling arm. This upgrade lets you fire a magnetic grappling claw towards an object and pull the suit towards it. You can use this to help reach higher areas when combined with the jump jets. You can also use it to grab items from inaccessible areas. If you're looking to fight a larger aggressive creature, whether that be a stalker or a reaper leviathan, you can use the grappling arm to latch onto it, bringing you into close range to attack. While this does work, I found it to be a much more interesting locomotive function rather than actual fighting capability. Can you say Reaper Leviathan surfing? Third, we have the Prawn Suit Propulsion Cannon upgrade. This functions exactly the same as the regular Propulsion Cannon. You can use it to lift and move items, making it useful for clearing a path or retrieving inaccessible items. And our last arm upgrade is the Prawn Suit Torpedo Arm. This works identical to the Seamoth Torpedo Launcher. The Prawn Suit Launcher can hold 6 torpedoes with Vortex taking priority. You can also attach 2 of these to the suit, giving you a total of 12 torpedoes and twice the firing rate. Well that is it for today's video regarding the Prawn Suit. If you have not already watched it, be sure to check out my video on the Seamoth and its upgrades. And next week we will have a video on the Cyclops and the upgrades associated with it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure you hit subscribe and tick the notification bell if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment below. Let me know about your experience fighting with the drill arm versus the punching arm and how it's worked out for you. As always, I am your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Be sure to keep it spicy this week, and I will see you in the next video.